What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Giga Hub Weekly Show, where we talk about things that might not seem interesting to you, but will seem interesting to us. We're here at our wonderful sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert. All I'm Dai right. Tony. And I am Adam Crenn. We are running a two-man operation tonight. Yep. Luis uh, got out of town for New Year's, so, um, mm -hmm. well, a week into the New Year, anyway. Um, so, welcome. Tonight, we are going to review The Matrix Resurrections. Yes. <laughs> In case you don't know, The Matrix was a groundbreaking trilogy back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, I'll just leave that alone. Yeah. <laughs> the first one's really good. The second two, not so much. They just exist. Um, yeah. Yeah, basically, this movie has Neo returning or, or uh, Keanu Reeves returning as Neo. We have uh, Trinity returning. We have some characters from the old one. We have a completely different Mobius, which, if that doesn't Morbius, make sense yeah. to you, or Mobius, yeah, yeah. Mobius. I watched Loki, so I got the two confused. <laughs> um, <laughs> if that doesn't make sense to you, we will explain why, so spoilers beware. Yes. Um, there is actually a good reason for it, which I thought was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it brings back a lot of characters, and I know initially when I saw the preview, my first question was like, why did they make another <laughs> one? <laughs> Was that what you thought? Yes. Yeah, why did they make another one? But we're going to get into that. Does it need another one? Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's 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 how we're going to lead off. Um, so we're going to start with our traditional sort of format. Um, we're going to talk about what we didn't like about it. Okay. Um, so you want to lead us off? I know. Well, first of all, let's let's start with this. Did you like the movie as a whole? Half of it. You liked half of it. Okay. That's fair. Yes. That's fair. I liked actually like three quarters of it all right <laughs> so uh um, but i didn't hate the other quarter but we'll get into that all right you want to talk about what you didn't like okay um basically once the story forms into actually being a sequel to the last movie is yeah. when i start to lose track of it and <laughs> when they give the explanation on why everything's happening i'm just mind boggled <laughs> by what i just saw uh yeah and the end, it's, well, well, the end of the first movie is abrupt, but it's more open-ended. In this one, it just happens. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the end of this one, it, well, you know what, I'm going to get into exactly why the end of this one was okay for what it was supposed to be a little bit later, but we got to get into some more stuff. Um, did you have anything else you really didn't like? At which uh, part did it go off the rails for you? Which part did you just start saying, like, now nah, this is, this is dumb? <laughs> hmm. Let me, let me try, let me try thinking of an exact pinpoint. Uh, hmm. Well, when it started, I'll, I'll I'll keep us going a little bit. When it started, Jess, Jessica Henwick, right? Yes. I love her, by the way. I, yes, I always she's have. Awesome. She's great. Um, she's totally good part of Iron Fist. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Jessica Henwick, we kind of see her observing events from the first movie. The first movie, which. In a way, I was kind of like, okay, this is dumb. There's a lot, there, there's a lot of nostalgia <laughs> like, pandering yeah, in this it, movie. It was dumb. But then and once it started to unfold and it didn't even make sense to her, that's when I think my brain clicked into the mode like, okay, I think I understand what they're doing, which was further strengthened later on in the first act. Yeah. Um, because, um, well, anyway, we're supposed to talk about what we don't like. So, yeah. Then it then it gets better from there. For me, it got a lot better from there. I remember at one point going, I'm like really enjoying this. <laughs> um, for me, what I didn't like, and when I say I didn't like, I didn't hate it. It just, it, there was a certain point where the plot of this movie really starts to kick in. And it's actually like the third act before it really kind of just becomes the Matrix Resurrections. Yeah. Um, it just, it's not even that it's bad. Everything made sense. The story was all there. Um, you know, all the, all the, everything lined up. It's just, I didn't care, um, because we didn't need it. <laughs> so once they got into the story itself, which is essentially what's going to happen and why they're bringing it back for potentially a franchise, Yes. um, which, which, well, again, I'll have to get into that a little bit, a little bit later. It's just, I lost interest to me. It was just kind of like, okay, let's just get to the end so I yeah. can finish this movie. <laughs> because I didn't care. It was just, that wasn't the stuff that was interesting to me. The stuff that was kind of like, it's the Matrix again, is when I lost hmm. interest. Yeah. Um, how did you feel? Is that kind of what you thought? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so you want to like get into like what happens after... Um, Jessica Henwood's character sees the events of the first movie with Trinity 
escaping the SWAT team. Not yet. Not um, yet. Was there anything else like just really stuck out? Like just didn't, uh, you didn't like? Well, okay. The the guy who's playing the new Mister uh, Agent Smith. Right. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> the the one who is um, Neo's boss in the right, beginning. Right. Okay. Yeah, the, this new Agent Smith. That's there was kind of like two Agent Smiths, which was another weird thing. But we'll we'll like get into that. A reincarnation of him or something like right. that. Right. Well, he reskinned him. They they did explain that they yeah. were reskinned. He 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 is not Hugo Weaving. He's not, and I did miss. I think the guy was charismatic enough, but he wasn't Hugo Weaving. No, and that that was a little disappointing. <laughs> I would have liked to see Hugo Weaving. Yeah, I didn't mind the guy, but he wasn't. Agent Smith. I didn't mind a recast of Morbius because there's an actual explanation behind that. Right, which we'll get into in a few minutes. Um, yeah. yeah. Was there anything else that just really stuck out to that you? I think really we're, we're like really agreeing. <laughs> well, that really stuck out, I would have to explain once we get into the story. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there was things that were just kind of... It would be in like the more heavy spoiler ter- territory. Like It's like throughout the end of the synopsis, basically. Yeah, I think the one thing that really bothers me with the whole franchise up to this point... And this isn't a knock on this movie specifically, and but it's I know it's a knock on like people, how they feel about the Matrix as a whole, kind of through the years, is it's the idea that the first movie really ended. To me, it felt like he had, you know, he became a god within the Matrix. He could bend the Matrix to his will. Yes. And then we get to the second movie, and it's well, he can fly, and that's it. And that yeah. was sort of carried into this movie, where it was like, well, he still really isn't. You know, no. yeah, was, I don't know. Yeah. That that's more of a complaint with where it went. I can't blame this movie for that, though. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, Keanu and uh, Carrie Ann Moss are showing their age, but Carrie Ann Moss honestly she still looks great. Um, yeah. she still looks great. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> She's my age, so Keanu Reeves looks, still looks cool. He's, He's yeah, he looked good. He looks yeah. just like John Wick. He looks like John. Same and long then, hair, same beard. Yeah, and then when you know later on when he gets out of the Matrix again, he just looks like Keanu Reeves. Yeah, <laughs> just older. Yeah, but he's aged well too. They both aged remarkably well, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so we're gonna get into it now. Yes. So, so we're getting into the first act. God dang it, we're getting into the first act. Mm-hmm. Um, so what did you feel about how when it starts to unfold and we start to see Neo's or Thomas Anderson's life? I liked it a lot. Right. right. Yes. Like, I like I especially like the whole meta aspect of it because it pretty much summarizes how the Wazowski feels about right. wanting to do another Matrix movie. Yeah, that I thought was genius, actually. Yes. What better way <laughs> to sort of express your own both discomfort and willingness to do another Matrix than by making Thomas Anderson a famous game designer who incre- who invented this great game that now is being forced to make a sequel. Yep. That was brilliant, I thought. A- that was his, great. His, yeah. his boss myth is like, oh, yeah, if, if you're not a part of this, we're just going to get another, another yeah. writer and yep. like leave you out of the project entirely. I, I feel real strongly that this was uh, Lana Wachowski, where the Wachowski is basically saying, basically telling the audience... Warner Brothers told us if we're not involved, they're going to do it anyway. So yeah. do you want somebody else to do it, or are you going to do it, right? Yes. Um, so with that being said, now you can kind of see why this one is set up for a franchise that I doubt they're going to be involved with, Yeah. and that's fine. Um, yeah, I thought that was genius, too. I thought mm-hmm. that was a really cool way to do that. And um, normally I'm against nostalgia baiting fan servicing moments, especially like when clips of the movie of the original right. movies get intertwined with right. what happens in Thomas Anderson's world where he's a game designer. Yeah. But ends up working when he realizes that everything's going to complete crap and when, <laughs> you know, the SWAT team comes <laughs> right, to his right, office right. and all that. Right. And um, you know, in his as it turns out, that original scene that we saw from The Matrix that Jessica Henwick's character her he she had a weird name in the movie. Yeah. It was like Buzzy or something like that. I don't remember what it was. Like Bugs. Bugsy or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Um, anyway, Jessica Henwick, I'm going to go with that because I love her. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so we find out what she was observing because the people look different, even mm-hmm. though it was the same scenes from The Matrix, technically. Yeah. Um, we come to find out it was something that Thomas Anderson was doing. He created like a separate bubble or kernel to sort of re-examine aspects of the game mm-hmm. because he he was, again, in that position from the first Matrix where he didn't feel comfortable and he was trying to explore those feelings, I yeah. guess. But, of course, it you had something to say? Go oh, ahead. no. The only major 
BS part I call about the whole <laughs> uh, make the original Matrix trilogy being a game was there is no way a PS2 game, <laughs> assuming it came out during the PS2 era, <laughs> could look that good. Well, there know, is no way that's possible. Everybody's in a simulation. It doesn't really matter, you know. I mean, they could look however they wanted it to look. Um, the whole idea was that it was a groundbreaking game. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so in it you had Mobi- Morbius. Yes. And you had New Morbius. Um, or Morpheus. Oh, Mor- Morpheus. Morpheus. Yeah. I keep yeah, so, getting oh, confused yeah. with Mobius and Morpheus. Yeah. You had a New Morpheus. God dang it. And you also had a different looking Trinity. Yes. But that's because he created it. They didn't look like the original characters. But mm-hmm. that Morpheus, apparently, because he was created. Morpheus. Yeah, Morpheus. Yeah. That Morpheus was created to be Morpheus, but yes. he was a synthetic. Mm-hmm. And because of that, he wanted out. Yes. <laughs> he was sort of freed. So that's why Mor- Morpheus looks so different. Yes. And it was kind of cool. It was kind of cool to have that aspect. I can honestly say, I don't know how you felt, but that's one thing I did like about it too, was it did continue on from the last movie, which we're going to get to some big questions about what that left over. <laughs> yeah, it did continue on from the last movie regarding how the world sort of continued on. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I like that. I like that the synthetics and the humans were kind of like working together, at least most of them were. Mm-hmm. Um, but, of course, the Matrix still existed. Yes. Um, which we'll get into that. I like when Even, the when the office is first attacked and Morpheus comes to Neo. He's like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And like, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. even have the Merce stuff going on right here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, check it out. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he has to like keep convincing him that yeah, you get the Matrix, the game is real. You right, right. Yeah, that's yeah, it's not a game you created. It's a real thing. That's a real event that happened in your life. I, you know, I thought that was clever too. I mean, what way? What a way to convince a guy that he's not in the Matrix is to make him believe that he had a psychotic breakdown because of a game he invested so much time and effort and money and interest into Yes, that he started to confuse reality. <laughs> oh, and yeah, and for those of you who know how harsh the game design industry is yeah, and all the massive yeah. crunches that are going on, yeah. it's The stress is believable, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, that was pretty interesting. I liked it. Um, I definitely liked it. Uh, where was I going? I had a thread there. Now I my train derailed. Oh, um, that's I think okay. uh, going. Um, <laughs> you were after um, like after it's explained uh, what's with why Morbius looks different in this one. Yeah, because he was a synthetic. Yeah, he, it's, it's, um, a new, it's a new Morbius. Oh yeah. Well, let's get to the yeah. Let's get to the big questions. Yes. So if you saw the Matrix trilogy, right? Trinity died. Yes. Neo, Neo died. died. <laughs> Morpheus died. Yes. <laughs> um, so what happened, right? Apparently, so let's. This is big spoiler territory. Which this is the part. I guess I should have talked about this earlier, but I didn't want to spoil it. This is the part that was kind of part of the main movie. That was kind of like, okay, that's a stretch. But okay, they're making it. That's fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Morpheus is dead. He is just dead. So this was a construct that wanted to be free because he was programmed to be Morpheus. Yes. Um. You come to find out that uh, the big villain in this big reveal, Neil Patrick Harris. Yes. <laughs> he is the actual villain of this film. Um, and he's also Thomas Anderson's therapist, which I thought was kind of cool. Yes. Um, he, monitor him and all that. Yeah. Apparently, he found out that Neo or Thomas Anderson, well, I guess it'd be Neo because that was his human name or his real name, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. The game he gave himself and Trinity, the name she gave herself. Um, apparently. As humans, they were special or something? Oh, my God. Okay, now we're getting to the like, part yeah, I do not like yeah. at all, and this is when the movie started to die off for me. Okay, so the explanation is that <laughs> the, their bond, Neo and Trinity, the yeah, power of their love, the, yeah. was enough to power up the new Matrix. Right, 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 right. Like, really? Out, out of all the people in the world? Even though they implied that there were still other humans. Yes. But they needed, the, he, Neo Patrick Terry needed them in some way. Yes. But he had to basically torture them in a way oh, psychologically yeah, has, yes um which is okay because you know some of that is true <laughs> but neo and trinity being they had the to only, be close to each other yeah, yeah but, it was bizarre but neo and trinity being the only two batteries <laughs> right. while the original matrix had like mil- upon millions of Bil- people yeah, billions or hum- millions at least yeah 
Um, yeah, that was a little odd. I didn't care for that too so, much. And like, that's why you brought back Neil and Trinity? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they basically reconstructed them from their... Well, remains? From their remains, yeah. They used their genetic coding and reconstructed and then revived them, basically. Yes. Um, yeah, that was a stretch. <laughs> but that's why they're alive. <laughs> um, I did like the idea of... I, I did like the idea of how they were sort of both in their lives and then... Like when they saw each other, though, there was this weird instant connection because there is people like that through life that you do kind of have that connection with, and it doesn't make sense. Yes, but I mean that was cool. Like they still remember, right, right, that they knew each other from the trilogy. Right, right, from the trilogy. Yes. Right. Um, All right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's I mean that's 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 the big. That's the, I guess we're getting to the second act now. That's the big part of the second act is the idea that you find out that they sort of, in a way, that I guess they need each other. Yes. But also Neil Patrick Harris needs them. Yes. Yeah, that was a little thin. But it was still okay because at that point we were still dealing with, you know, I think, I think that was something in this movie I did like more than the first movie is this movie spent more time. Let me back up a little bit. I liked that it didn't just get lost in a bunch of mindless action and violence, which the first movie does tend to do a little bit. Yeah, especially when and they the break second into... two movies do way too much. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> they just get lost in mindless violence and action. Um, this movie actually spent a lot more time dealing with the emotional core of the first movie, which I think worked in this movie about the life you're leading. It's like your life doesn't feel like the life you wanted or should have had mm -hmm. and something just feels off and now i know you being 21 that may not make as much sense but me being 50 god how old am i now 53 it makes a lot more sense you always question the way your life went and how you could have things different so maybe that resonated more with me i don't know um but did you like that at all? I, I like that it spent more time doing that. With that I, with idea Neo's, of the, with Neo and Trinity's characters. Neo and Trinity and the life, like how your life turned out and what it could have been or should have been or what you wanted it to be versus what it is and how some things just don't feel. Well, like, in terms of like, uh, Neo's side of the story, yeah, I kind of liked it. But Trinity, um, it's just that Trinity has kids and she's... Yeah, she and a husband. Yeah, and a husband and she just works on motorcycles and right it's more tragic she does what keanu reeves does in real life yeah <laughs> builds motorcycles it's true <laughs> um it's more tragic on neo's end honestly than trinity since trinity uh, while she is exploring why her care why, why she reminds herself of herself in the game because right. she played she told she neo, played the game yeah. yeah she played the game like yeah she reminds me of me a lot yeah like neo himself like it's going through an existential crisis. Yeah, it's hard. It's much harsher for him. You're yeah. absolutely right. She, you know, she clearly felt somewhat unfulfilled in her marriage, but she clearly loved her kids. Yeah. And she was doing what she loved, so her life wasn't nearly as tragic as Neo's. Yes. Um, but yeah, that was Neo's life was kind of harsh. But that was kind of the point. Neil Patrick Harris kind of he said later on in the movie, yeah, that was what works. That's what mm -hmm. keeps the power moving, I guess, apparently, is kind of yeah. keeping you in existential crisis, for lack of a better term. But, yeah. All right. So that's pretty much the second act. So um, and Neil Patrick Harris's character, he is just like um, a, he's just like Smith. He's just there to torture Neo for what he believes is the greater good. Well, he, yeah, what was interesting about his character is he was a synthetic that apparently was around in the original Matrix trilogy, yes. but we didn't see him, which is fine. And he sort of took over the role as the architect. Yes. But did. the reason why he took it over was because he understood, he spent a lot of time studying and understanding humans where other synthetics just didn't give a crap. Nope. And But he spent a lot of time sort of understanding what makes them tick and what makes them work, and that's why he was better able to manipulate Neo yeah. and, and Trinity, and, Trinity yeah, power and stuff like that. Matrix. So that was kind of cool. And meanwhile, the uh, the um, the original Agent Smith, or not really original, he has a new face, but yeah, yeah, he, yeah. like at a certain point, once he, he found out, he was pretty pissed. <laughs> yeah, when, when he re when he remembers that he was he was Smith, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's still after Neo. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> well, he was and he wasn't. Um, I oh, think yeah, yeah. I, I think he used Neo to get what he wanted because he was so. Because when Neo had 
presumably destroyed him in the very first Matrix, but he really didn't destroy him. He actually freed him from the Matrix. Yes, and freed him from control of the Matrix. It technically gave him more power. He actually <laughs> learned to enjoy that freedom, even though he's still kind of a sociopath by human standards. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what he says in this movie, he goes, I will not wear a collar. He goes, that guy put me in a collar, and he goes, I will not wear that collar again. Yes, I am see, going to kill him. You get to see AIs <laughs> turn on each other. Right, right. That awesome. was kind of cool. Temporary um, alliance with Smith. I didn't expect right. that. There was a neat aspect that I didn't notice that actually Dan a little earlier was talking about. And the reason why, you know, I didn't get it because I did. I haven't watched the trilogy in years, right? Mm -hmm. But remember the, the French guy? I can't think of his name. Yeah. He was in this movie as kind of a homeless guy yeah. with, with nothing. Well, if you remember correctly, in the original trilogy in the second movie, he was an information broker. So he was rich. You know, he did what he wanted. He lived a life of extravagance in The Matrix. Yeah. Well... Yeah, that makes sense for, what, 2002, 2003? But now, information is so no, out there. Widespread everywhere yeah. with the advent of social media right, and right. all that. Right, right, and like the dot-coms have all busted and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now he's homeless and powerless. Because and I thought he has, he has no purpose. Yeah, that, that was a nice little thing. He has no purpose or function. He's just an angry homeless guy <laughs> in the Matrix, and even though he's a synthetic. He yeah. has, there's the meta-commentary. Meta it was like, people used to read books. Yeah. And like, not my, my rig make movies. Right, right. Since yeah. this one's like... Half of a remake of the first one, basically. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. It does touch a lot of the same themes, but I did like that it got into more intimate understanding of the same themes. Okay, now we're going to get into the third act. Is there anything you wanted to say about what you really liked before uh, we jump into the next act? I mean... The uh, last act, the less the less act, which we won't oh, spend a lot okay. of time on. Because um, yeah, that's okay. when it just kind of turns okay, into with, with a Matrix movie. With the second act, um, we're introduced to... The new Zion with Naomi and yeah, Io. I Io, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that all right. Was, that was all right. The, the new, the new crew. <laughs> they're they're not they're not as memorable as the crew from the original Matrix. Only Jessica Henwick. Only Jessica Henwick. Yeah, yeah. but none of the other guys. Redwood was kind of memorable. Eh. <laughs> well, because he was always there. He was always like popping into the Matrix, going, "Hey, they're onto us" or whatever. So you saw him a lot. Maybe that's the only reason why it yeah. was memorable. But Aside yeah. that, the. Uh, the only fight scene I like at that point was Neo versus Anderson, just one on one. Yeah, that, that part I liked, even though you get to see it was it. brief, but yeah, yeah it was brief, cool. But yeah, <laughs> thankfully it, brief yeah. compared to the second movie. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> even though Keanu sh showed a bit of his age during the fight sense, there's no way he could. He do did. That. There was a couple moves I saw where I was like, "Ooh, Ooh good yeah. thing they quick cut that." <laughs> even though there's you know, quick cuts like that, it, it was yeah. still a good fight. Yeah, it was cool. Now it's the third act. Yeah, now we get into the third act. This is when it kind of. Uh, it doesn't go off the rails because storytelling wise, I think it all came together the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. I mean, they set everything up correctly. It was just, it became a Matrix movie at that point, if that makes sense. <laughs> and I didn't care. Matrix <laughs> movie as in yeah. only long fight scenes with rave music playing. Yeah. And, and, you know, Lana Wachowski found a way to get zombies in it in a way, kind yeah, of. Yeah. The, the swarms or whatever they call yes. them, which was okay. It was interesting the way they did it because they. There was a point in the movie where Trinity, well, she accepts that, yeah, this isn't my life. I'm going to go with Neo. And they free her from the Matrix, and they're trying to escape because they're still in the Matrix. So they're trying to get her out. Yes. And they start riding away on a motorcycle, on her motorcycle. She's driving. And um, the swarm or whatever, basically, uh, basically, Neo Patrick Harris starts activating all the people because he can do it en masse now. Yes. And... Um, uh, it's kind of interesting because he's coming at him basically like a zombie horde, but it can't, it's just not working. No. And I thought the next level of that was something different that you don't see even in zombie movies where basically everybody in every building basically started activating and just jumping out the window trying to <laughs> hit him basically. So there's people just yeah. falling out of the sky. I was like, holy crap. Yeah. I thought that was kind of a cool scene, if dumb. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like that it's more practical than cg like you could tell that the stunts were most of the stunts were real right like, minus the jumping off the buildings like all the right, all right. the vehicle work was real um what i didn't start liking was when well i kind of got it at first neo he's he's a bit rusty he can't use his powers as much right. as he used to but then we get to the part where trinity is also a one i think i think it makes more sense because I think Neo at that point, you know, his 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 brainwashing or gaslighting or whatever you want to call it, his therapy sessions with Neil Patrick Harris, 
his stuff was way more intense and carried out over 60 years, apparently, we found out. Yes, 60 years. Um, even though it had been 20 years since the movie, in the Matrix time, it was 60 years. Yeah. So he was really had a hard time getting back to who he was, whereas Trinity wasn't messed with like he was. Yeah. So for her to get back to that point was, like, quick. Yeah, but Which then, maybe was a little too quick. I get yeah, it. Yeah, but then Trinity starts flying. She starts flying, yeah. Well, that was a very, very end. Um, yeah, then we get to the finale, which is kind of a... Kind of very matrixy. They jump off a building together, and she flies, and he doesn't. <laughs> and then, uh, well, let's let's wrap it up. Let's get into the ending. So, the ending sets up for a franchise, which is clearly what Warner Brothers wanted, right? Yes. Which I mean could be interesting, I guess. Um, I know they're making a video game. Okay. That, which the video I game mean, actually looks kind I'm of amazing. In a video game, then yeah. I more movies, mo- more movies. Yeah. Um, which the video game looked pretty amazing. The, the, the Unity Engine demo. Yeah. Yes. It looked damn near real. Especially in a PS5. <laughs> yeah, it looked damn near real. Um, but yeah, it just ends very Matrixy, and it ends like the first one, except now it's Trinity and Neo, not just Neo. Now, I know a lot can be said, which the Wachowskis themselves put into the script earlier on in the movie. A lot can be said about gender politics and bull crap I like that. I didn't notice any. And, and transitioning and things like that, because they themselves transition. Yeah, I'm, I may have... I could, I could potentially see the transitioning symbolism. Yeah. But in terms of gender but, politics, I'm like. But the truth is, I don't care, because I, I didn't think notice. I think the reason why the Matrix appealed to so many people in the first place, and why this movie, at least, appealed to me on certain levels, is because more than anything, and and it's the same. Well, it's the same, but not the same for anybody. Is if you feel like an outsider, if you feel like you just don't belong. I mean, those feels feelings are common to a lot of people, yes. and clearly common to the Wachowskis, right? Yes. Um, so I think that part is good, mm-hmm. um, and that, that's part of the one that works. But yeah, it was a rehash in a way. It was just a rehash with both of them instead of one of them, right? Yes. Um, which is fine. I don't care. <laughs> where, where could the transitioning symbolism be at in this movie in particular? Because I didn't really see much of. I didn't really see a lot of gender politics in general in this movie. Well, I don't. I I was referring to stuff I had watched online. I don't want to get into it because okay. I don't want to start going into that kind of review. I I hate those kind of reviews. All right. People, it's it's the idea that people have always turn everything into some, some something political. Yeah. Whether it's gender politics or this or that or feminism or or whatever. I just ugh, yeah. I want it's storytelling. Yeah. It's a story. Um. I guess that's what I was trying to get at. So I apologize. Oh. I didn't. I didn't want to go down that road. Um. All right. You know, ultimately, I think it speaks to you if you've ever felt like an outsider, and that's the part that's good. Um, did you see the very, very end credit scene? <laughs> the yes. after credit scene? Yes. I like that. That was funny. It <laughs> made me laugh. <laughs> it made me laugh just because it was just funny. And it was that. I think it was them again, the Wachowskis basically going, eh. <laughs> yeah. So I thought it was funny. Okay. Anything else before we give it a star review? No. No, that's it. We've we've exhausted everything, every avenue. I mean, I like the new Morpheus as a he was good as a magnetic uh, metal ball thing. Yeah, it was like a nana. No, it wasn't even nanites. It was larger than that. But that was kind of yeah. cool. That was cool. That was kind of cool. Yeah, we didn't talk about Morpheus too much. He was good too. He yeah. was good. The Oracle's daughter was cool too. The Oracle's daughter was that the the one who that was, was the Indian lady. Yeah. Yeah, she was cool. That's right. Mm-hmm. It was at the same. It looked the it's little the girl same, looked same, like her. Same, yeah, same actress. <laughs> okay, because I was gonna say that little girl and her looked. Uh, I mean, it looked like her as a little girl. Yep. So yeah, it was. That makes sense. Okay. All right, let's give it some stars. Out of four stars, what are you gonna give this film? Two. Really? Two. 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 Like I like I like everything with the whole meta narrative. I like all those parts. Yes. But like once it, it's explained that oh Neo and Trinity were brought back to life because their power of their love like it's like the ultimate power battery I'm like yeah okay. that was that was stupid okay <laughs> um I'm gonna give it a three not because I think the film as a whole is a three I just think it was better than most people are basically because I know a lot of people that friggin' trashed it online even people I know. I thought it was better than that. Not because it was like the other Matrix movies, but specifically because it tried to do something different. It actually stayed away from a lot of the mindless action that the other ones oh, have. Yeah. And I think I think it was really clever the way they worked in. You know, because you, there's been movies that sort of very bluntly 
or or maybe with a sledgehammer sort of criticize themselves or how the movie was made you know almost like very meta that's mm -hmm. not done well i think this was done very well um and and i think their criticism not it wasn't necessarily criticism one of those was basically a statement like hey basically we're making this movie or somebody else is gonna and i didn't mind that i thought it was cool so yeah, i'm gonna give it i'm good. gonna give it three stars yep yeah so basically the parts i don't like about the movie is when it Try, when it's actually a, when a Matrix it, movie, yeah. When, 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 <laughs> right. The moment it becomes an actual sequel to the Matrix, no, right. but yeah. all the meta part, Keanu suffering, yeah. yeah, that part was awesome. Yeah. Once we got into the third act, is when I just started not caring because at that point, it's like you could tell when it switched into the third act. I think it, mm. if I remember correctly, I think it's almost four acts, not three. But I remember when it got into the last act, yeah, I was like, okay, whatever, let's get to the end. <laughs> I know it's gonna happen. Let's go. All right. We're gonna have the big showdown. <laughs> yep. With the exception of the guys, all the zombies jumping out of the windows. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else surprised me. All right, cool. Yep. All right, so that's our review. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and we will comment on your comment. Yes. Um, you know, if you like this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you're interested in helping us out at all, we did start a Patreon. Um, you can find a link to that Patreon in the comments below. Um, we're going to also put our... Uh, da, 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 da. We're going to put some things we're involved with in the links below. Yes. Um, we're going to quit talking about that at the end of the show. We're just going to end it. Um, yep. And that's really it. Um, we're into some things. Check them out in the comments and comment, and we will we'll answer you back. And thank you, guys. And that's it. Any last words? Uh, go see this movie and HBO Max if you can. There you go. Good night. Good night.